Welcome to FYI, FYI family and all those who are joining us this morning. It's another morning. We're a tad bit late, but we're happy to be here with you guys. Nonetheless, as per usual, even though it's hot at her end with the fires, I'm privileged to have with me Tabitha Sirabo Haley this morning. Tabby, how are you doing? Good morning. Welcome. Happy Thursday. Good morning to you, Sherrod. I'm doing okay. I don't know if you were aware, but we had a black one of four something this morning. So my day started then. I and have no, some shower yeah. came, so that cooled down the face of it. But I'm doing good. All, 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 I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? Excellent. Well, out front, we had a black one about a half hour ago. Well, less than that. You know, out front. But let's see what happens. We can't talk too much, you know. Lisa, <laughs> we have another strike, another blackout strike. But good to see so many folks on with us. And of course, happy to have you here, Tabby. Yet another day, yet another day. I hope this sojourn is longer than shorter. Camille Cox says she had a storm too. Camille, what happened by your end? What happened by your end? Tabby, great to see you this morning. It's good to be here. Um, I, I, I like being with you on these morning programs. Oh, excellent. I'm excellent. Glad I can assist you. Anyway, that excellent. I can. Excellent. That's going to start my day on a high, very <laughs> high note. <laughs> Knowing that you, you like being here, you're not forced against your will by anyone. You know, you've, you've come on your own volition. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. Anything to support you do. Yeah, guys, how are you doing this morning? How are you guys doing at your end this morning? Yvonne Ramasar, Silbert Stewart, Vanilla Garnet. How are you folks doing? How are you guys waking up this morning? You know, y'all is the main thing here. You know, it's not me so much. You know, anybody could replace me, but yeah. I don't <laughs> think so, sure. MVPs. <laughs> you know, the real G's. <laughs> <laughs> Wunella, Orwin Don, Yvonne Ramasar, all the good folks, Waveney Doris. Yes, you guys. Earl Cook, good morning. Good morning, good morning Earl. Yeah, go right there, Tabby. I just saw Earl saying, Earl saying good morning, and Waveney's, oh yeah, Waveney's washing. Yeah. Yes, just good morning to everyone that's coming on. Remember to share the live and to let people that. know that we're on. This morning, and right. we're going to get into some serious discussions. But before yeah. we get there, I'm hoping that you have a great day this morning and you're having your morning tea, whether it's coffee without sugar yeah. or hot water or maybe some moringa this morning. Uh, and let's get yeah. started. So, I got the coffee here, but I managed to let this spoon in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have upside down in these parts. <laughs> Not plenty, but a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, Sonia Cobb. It's good to see you, Sean of Fortune. Good Sonia morning. Massey Cobb. Sonia is a wonderful person, Tabby. Hope you get a chance to meet her someday. You know, That's she's nice. one beautiful, beautiful person. Guys, how are you doing? Hope the audio is good. You know, hope the audio is good. Tabby, you ready to give some valid, credible information? I'm waiting on you. I always think you're <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with some stuff recovering folks uh, internationally again. Welcome. And we start you guys with the first 15 things that we think you guys ought to know as we start the day today. It might be 17 or 18. <laughs> Tabby, I always remind our viewers that 60 minutes is no longer 60, actually. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes you get 61, sometimes an hour and a minute. minute. Sometimes, you you get sometimes you get 45. You know how. First 15, first 15 folks. And we start with some international news with some regional implications. They're telling us the son of a very prominent Dominican Republic politician has been shot in Texas. And this is a lawmaker, Alfredo Rojas. I hope I'm calling it right. And then the son was fatally shot at the Texas gas station. And the police said they were searching for four men who they believe were part of carrying out uh, this hit on this young man, what they're calling a very targeted killing. And we know when something happens one place in this region, it happens almost everywhere. Tabby? That's, that's, that's a Not very yet. interesting. That's very interesting. You know, everybody has have, have their lives and it's an adult. 
Um, so yeah. we're not sure what he may or may not be involved in. I'm not saying that he's involved in anything ulterior to any, uh, to any that's not what I'm trying to I- imply. But um, the, the, this is this is cross border. Um, he's the po- son of a politician and is a politician who is actively in politics in um, in the DR. Right. So right. let's see how how the US will respond to this particular issue. Yeah, yeah. And again, they said this was a targeted. That's what that's one of the words they use here. A very uh, a very targeted. It was um, an intentional shooting. intentional shooting and killing. Yeah. So that's what, the idea what, what is the story behind that? That's the idea that is a, it, it was intentional. Um, the father is a member of Dominica's, uh, the Dominican Republic ruling uh, modern revolutionary party. So let's see, let's see where it goes. But these are the vicissitudes of serving in public life. You know, these are the vicissitudes, and that's why when I had the opportunity to send to my own, you know, I said, "Y'all, y'all be told two less things, <laughs> two less things, two less things to worry about." But I don't think the worry safety, stop, safety you know. is always important. Safety is always important. Precisely. No matter all they get is always thinking of the safety of your children. Right. When you're a public life, the you know, on every level, the doors are yeah. open. Everybody feels that they have access. They should have access. Yeah. Um, and so you hear things, you see things, people do things that you as a parent may think is not justified. But yeah. you know, once you're in public life, things are just, people seem to believe that they should have equal or even more access to you than anyone else. Correct is right. But, you know, it's just, just some of the things, one of the things we following this morning, this young man was 29 years old, um, taken to hospital in a critical condition and pronounced dead on arrival there. So, uh, you know, our thoughts and prayers with the family. And as yes. we are there in international news, like um, happening in Haiti, although we've been following this one, the diplomats are pushing uh, for, you know, for the transitional council here in Haiti to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, and Haitian diplomats urge action on the delayed transitional council plan. Um, this and this is especially Tabitha. Um, I, I mentioned the word diplomats there. This is this is the um, some of the diplomats out of the Organization of American States um, asking for a greater urgency, urging Haitian politicians to proceed um, without delay in the replacing of Prime Minister Ariel Henry. I know they pronounce that different in Haiti. We, we know this area. Henry, uh, with a with a with a um with this uh new body or this new person who is gonna helm uh the Haiti government, but they've had several, several challenges here. Um, you know, they of course you you know not only has the organization of American states been pushing for this, but also CARICOM has been front and center, very belated. Um, but front and center in this whole process to move Haiti forward. You know, the the uh, Haitian military, Tabian viewers, civil organizations in Haiti, and I dare say even the gangs um, have had their own alternative transition method. Um, some have proffered the idea of choosing a provisional president from Haiti Supreme Court and barbecue the uh, leading gang member there in Haiti um, said that they were willing to uh, ease some of the violence if they had a voice on the transitional council and what obtains there in Haiti. So it's a lot, Tabby. A lot yeah, of the, the, the situation in Haiti is tumultuous to say the least, and um, get, getting to a solution will be very difficult. Um, I know it's not a case of not trying. We need yeah. to keep trying and insisting and speaking and negotiating and you know, understanding the context of what is happening in, in, in Haiti because what always hap- always seem to happen is that imposing your perspective on a, on a people or on a nation is never mm-hmm. ends up well. And Correct. so hearing from the people what it is in, the, is in their best interest and how it is we can help them to solve their problems rather than trying to solve their problems for them, I think is always the best way to go. Um, I hear this lot of talks of the different gangs and gangs and gangs have a very negative connotation. I'm not saying that they're not gangs, but the people have different sects of, of, of people who are following different leaders for different reasons. Um, and I think how we approach all of these persons who are a part of the decision making, whether we like it or not, 
we may not like them we may not like what they do but there's a reality that they have a following and people respond and listen to them yeah. so at some level they all have to be part of the conversation because you don't want to um push a solution on the people that they don't like and they don't agree with because it will bend back a square one so i'm hoping that the persons who are involved in the conversations that they understand the context they understand what is required and while publicly they may want to say that they're not speaking to gangs and so they understand that they need to speak with everybody who has who has a, who has the ability to make some sort of change in Haiti to be able to do what is required to so that you know so that Haiti can settle down at some point correct uh, uh, correct tabitha on all fronts um the us has thus far pledged the largest financial backing for this mission um but they've had their own challenges back home with getting that done and as the oas um as oas has been talking you know it's a lot of talk sometimes but the money is in there um the diplomats of the oas have approved this solution for um uh, you know, for support uh, for the transitional council and the, the plans for transitional council there in Haiti uh, but they did not uh, mandate specific contributions or funding to the country's um cash trap humanitarian group or part of this whole process of transition so you know sometimes you got to put your money with it. most times <laughs> and, that's what, and that's what happens a lot in a lot of these international conversations that happen is that people pledge a lot because they want to be seen to be you know a part of the process but when it actually comes to action and putting the money where the mouth is that's where a lot of things are lacking it happens with our energy conferences in terms of the um environmental conferences i mean not energy where a lot of people put a lot of money they say what they're going to do by 2030 and all of those things and so it replicates itself throughout all sectors throughout all all the, these international um agencies and conversations and when these people from the different countries first world countries as they call themselves like the pledge things to look good but then in the end they come up with nothing and so um the the, the, the issues remain because they don't actually do what is required when the time comes correct is right and you know while all of that is happening we got uh, issues happening uh, back home as well uh, yesterday i think it was the minister of on the phase of the national cooperation in Utah a met with representatives of the ABC EU countries and France um you know this is a monthly dialogue they have pertaining to issues coming out of the United Nations Security Council and while all of that was happening that seemed to be overshadowed by some of what was happening on our western border with Venezuela I hope I get my geography right the western borders with Venezuela as Maduro had another decree about Venezuela and it be like you know the whole story but it belonging to them but there's some that fit, that that the some persons who feel that we have not been treating with this matter serious as we should um there is no public engagement on it there's no public education on this matter we've seen to revert to the status quo um of maybe four or five months ago when we forgot that we even had a problem with the Venezuelans and we saw Irfan uh, went bearing gifts Quite recently, while Maduro is seeking to annex as the people, I mean, this is this is madness. You know, we need a stronger hand on Venezuela, much stronger. I I, I can't uh, I can't agree with you more, Sherrod, on this Venezuela matter particularly. I see, I don't understand the policy as it relates to Venezuela. Have they determined that? what exactly venezuela is trying to accomplish and if they have determined that have they then put the different systems in place at various levels to ensure it doesn't happen and so uh -huh. there are different things you do at different levels and so i do not see it i don't think that the pvp is taking it as serious as it is um i think they are hoping and praying that maduro is just um playing politics and at some uh -huh. point he's going to um jump off of the you know of the political train that he's on once election happens or something in Venezuela i think they're hoping that that is what he's doing and so they're not really paying as much attention as they should to the issue they really do not understand how venezuelans feel about escobar because of their indoctrination from birth and so it's it's like they are far removed from reality where the venezuela situation is concerned and so we're going to reap whatever 
Maduro souls because they're not protecting and, and ensuring that they push back against what is happening and what Maduro is saying in Venezuela about Guyana. And so on exactly. all fronts, whether it is the number of Venezuelans coming into the country, whether it is their foreign policy and how they engage other countries on the matter, on all levels, it seems to be um, abysmal. I, 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 exactly. I don't see that. Exactly. And you know what? Even on the other side of that, Tabby, and I'm certain, you know, Warren knows this, Warren Fagir, who's on with us, and Kyle Baino and Alan Putkow and Andrew Griffith. Even on the other side of that, even if we say, okay, um, Maduro is rabble rousing because of the elections. You know, aren't elections people want to see the promises that you've made, you know, come to fruition? And so on either side of this, Maduro, you know, needs action. But we just gone back into this thing like this problem does not exist. And that's the tragedy there. So um, this is upon us this morning because they've issued a long statement concerning um, uh, Esquibo and you know, they passed some organic laws recently. Um, and in their minds, they're inching closer and closer. We might have a, 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 a far different belief, but in comparison to our 4,000 army, today 150,000 and, you know, everything else that they have in the arsenal, we're at a disadvantage. We're, we're relying on diplomacy, but we're acting the part. Clearly, we're not acting the part. And so, uh, again, another one of the issues that we're confronting, Jack, you know? Weak leadership. Let me just say it. Yeah. Get off my chest. Weak leadership yeah. from Ship the Rhine Channel, Paul Drive, right? on both sides of Ship the Rhine Channel, Paul. Weak leadership. I, I, I don't know how to add to that. I agree with you 100%. It's weak leadership. It is, uh, 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 it's obviously, um, I'm try I, I can't even, <laughs> I can't find words to express how I feel because it's almost as if one is either they don't care it's two or two. They 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 made a decision that is it's one thing or the other. One, we utilize the, the Venezuelans in Guyana to win the next elections, or Venezuela takes Guyana. Either way, uh, you know, it's one or the other. So it's a case of they're not caring of what happens to the country afterwards because it's either they're in control or Venezuela can take it. Because that is that is seems to be the mindset because they're not putting systems in place to ensure our, our our borders are protected and our people are protected. They are not. So I am yeah. very concerned about yeah. where this goes. And I see Orin Don Cook is agreeing with us. Orin Don says we can help. We weak leadership. And uh while we're dealing with that, Tabitha, as you know, uh, last evening I called Tabitha at around maybe 10 o'clock, 10 30. They talk about fires. I was chasing a fire in um what place is that? Mocker. You know, and at the back of South, that land stretches all the way down Providence, Mocker, you, you know, huge parts of land. And the folks at Mocker told me that that fire might be closer to Oakland than it is to Mocker there. But a huge spot of land there was on fire. And the authorities, you know, they got their hands full. They're battling wildfires on every, um, every front. And some are wildfires, and they're saying also that some... Some of these fires have human origins. They've been set deliberately in some instances. That's what they're telling us, right? They're telling us that also that the West Rhine Belt and the Eccles Fire Station successfully uh, contained a large fire at Caledonia on the East Bank. Um, and elsewhere, they now have active fires at Coverden. I heard about that last evening. The folks from um, Mocker told me there was a very active one at Coverden. But it was too late. I didn't. I didn't able to drive up. Cover then. Um, Heroes Highway, Port Morant, East Burbies, Quarantine. These are very active ones. Lovely last village. This is where our MP, um, Prince Jordan lives. Um, all of this is happening, and of course, they tell us also that we've had about um, two thousand wildfires. I hope I'm getting that figure right. But most importantly, folks, they said if there are fires or excessive smoke close to where you are. This can be reported by the fire service a hotline number at 912. Right? 912. I just hoping if you're call, somebody picks up. But one fires left, right, and center, Tabitha. Yeah, I, I um as you did indicate after you called me, I checked and I did see the blaze and it yeah. was quite big. Um, that's that's how how on the roof. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, and that's how you sent me out of my house, and that's how the next year. And then I went. In a room. <laughs> I listened and I went. Um, and yes, it's it was it was very it was very bright. It was very red. It actually lit up the entire sky. Um, and <clears throat> when I'm going to go back to what happened the day before with the picture with Ropes and Ben looking at something or trying to ascertain something behind in perseverance at, well, at Mocha. And I knew that that was the same fire he was trying to ascertain that I was seeing at my end because it's really not that far apart if you understand how our lands are. Um, behind where I am is in South Ramveld. When you go at the back, they're continuing the, um, the, the building of homes and so uh, behind Cummings Lot and it's coming all the way back behind me. And it's going extending all the way to Perseverance, all the way to Mocha at the back. Um, so they're opening a lot of lands there. But what they're also doing is that the persons who are doing a lot of those construction behind there, the building of the clearing, roadways, yeah. and so they are burning the, um, the, 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 the grass and the trees to make it easier for them to access the lands and to build whatever they have to build there. So yes, there may be wildfires, because, but I think some of those wildfires are being caused by the same burning that is starting behind Perseverance. And it's the 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 the, the, um, the embers are blowing, and they're catching fires all other places on the east bank because it has it's some fires that have been there for days, and now they're realizing that there's something happening and they need to take a stock of it. Um, and so yes, I also like to let people know that if there's smoke and so that you put take all precautions because inhaling smoke is unhealthy. And so you should try your best to stay away from it. But for like me, when it comes directly into my house, I don't know what I'm supposed to do at that point. I guess put some wet towel over my face. Yeah, yeah. So uh, definitely uh, lots more guidance uh, needed on this issue of how do people, you know, um, relate to what's happening? How do they go about something that's happening close to them? How, how, do they, um, how do they comport themselves? Right? But while that's happening, folks, they're telling us, there's a lot of fire also at a place called Santa Arata and also Santa Mission. And Santa Mission, the authorities are telling us, guys, there's a fire crisis there. I see um, someone just said the fire is also at, um, they also come at, Magna Barrow says they come back at number one, Canal 2. Um, and uh, thanks, Morna, for joining us from Belladrum. Uh, uh, but Santa Mission has a crisis. They're saying that, Firefighters are unable to access affected areas for extinguishing fires in Santa Mission. And so the focus has moved from um, fighting, combating these fires that are now inaccessible uh, to ensuring resident safety through evacuation. So that is what we're hearing is happening at Santa Mission. Uh, they are evacuating persons from these gravely hot, these grave hot spots. Capital. Yeah. Wow. So wow. And, and 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 are they saying that this is a wildfire? Correct. Did they okay. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So we have to take all precautions. I don't know if if it's it's. I know this. It's hot. Um. And I guess in some parts you haven't had rain for a while, and so maybe that's the cause of some of the wildfires that we're seeing. But whatever the cause, I um I'm hoping that people stay safe and they always um take precaution. And don't, if you know that something is close to you, don't go to bed at night knowing that it's, you know, a stone throw yeah. away. And yeah. you don't take the necessary precautions to ensure that your family is safe. Yeah, they're telling us, Tab Tabby, 38 persons were evacuated thus far from Santa Mission and neighboring uh, villages due to the dense smoke. And 30, 34 of those 38 have found temporary shelter at the Tamiri Primary Schools. And the others are um, anchoring down with their relatives and the Firefighters, joint services, and volunteers are managing the situation there, at least trying to at Santa Mission. Of course, as we said, there have been over, it wasn't too, too, 2000, over 1,200 fires um, since the year has started. A huge swath of that, they say, is between region five and six, over 1,000 fires between region five and six. And, you know, they said uh, 1,285 thus far between January and March. And again, uh, some of this is being manned by the joint services, including the Environmental Protection Agency. They got civil defense in there. I'm trying to just cope with what's happening, you know, and they're going to wait and wait. And then you can see 
Yeah, if I'm going to walk through some leadership just now, watch it. Watch out for it. You can see him convening the joint services and a big meeting about being briefed in the fire because it's all staged. It's all, you know, optics, optics. Watch for it. If I can't help himself, he has to do something. Watch for it, Tabby. You can see them. They're going to run out. Can't help this out. But that's what's happening on that front, folks. A lot of, a lot of wildfires we're combating. And we're going to be following more and more of this in the coming days because we're not seeing enough reporting on what is on what is happening. I think, that, happening. I think that is my main, that, that as you're speaking, that is my main, because I'm trying to figure out whether or not is that I missed it or they have not really informed the people of whether or not because the place is so hot and dry that they, if you're living next to large swaths of land, then there's a likelihood that a wildfire may occur. And so people are aware that this thing is likely to happen if you're in that particular vicinity. But I can't recall seeing anything of that nature. And so when things, now we're at 1,200, now Ben is in front of a fire with a picture. Yeah. And now I have any After weeks of Yes. After weeks of person saying, what is going on here? What is this fog? What is this smoke we're seeing? And no response. Now they realize that yeah. they have to at least say something. Tabby, I think somebody goes to Ben and they say, go and look Pagali. And so you can go in front of the camera and you get your hand and hear me looking. See? <laughs> <laughs> look Pagali. <laughs> and that, that's the posture, you know. Um, why that's happening on that front? We still seem to be dealing with some matters coming out of the Easter weekend. They tell us uh, brothers have been hospitalized. Um, people are fighting left, right, and center. That uh, Easter, Easter night brawl, and we we still getting uh, some of these reporting up until now. That's that's how bad it was. And these two brothers, Leon Thomas and Delroy Thomas, 24 and 22, were stabbed during um, an argument. And this is Easter, Easter night, a holy, a holy holiday, and, and that's quite interesting because Tabitha, this is happening, you know. Um, there was an there was an editorial out of I think it was um, Peepin Chama, one of them, uh, talking about how the sim the symbolism the the what these holidays represented have waned over time. You know the fact that people out in a beach, brawling, partying, you know there's a revelry and all of that. It 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 started when on Good Friday we were on the road and we realized that bars were open. Yeah, and um, there are supermarkets and so that were selling alcohol and just that alone, you know, was not what used to happen in the past. Yeah, uh, and so when you start there and goes downhill, and then you see some, the, so the whole idea and essence of what the holiday was supposed to represent has lost itself. Um, yeah. in person, just using the time as a time of revelry and not a time to take stock of where they are and what it is that they may need to do to better themselves. And so yeah. the society we're in, I guess we can't tell people how to live their lives. But once that starts to move from what was the essence of the holiday to people just enjoying themselves, then anything can happen. And, you know, as you say, a brawl on the Easter weekend, uh, people are drinking on Good Friday, which never used to happen before. So yeah. parties that have nothing to do with the holiday yeah. just... You know, you won't, so you, won't have life, you didn't drink one day for the week or you do it privately in your home. And you know what? I see I see our Hindu brothers and sisters, and rightly so, speaking up when these yeah. things happen on their holiday. And I think we Christians, we we, we gonna talk up for ourselves a little bit now. You know, we ain't gonna speak up, you know, church leaders and so on. We gonna talk up a little bit now because this is getting out of your hand. And it's just one day, we said for the whole year, we said, you know, stop drinking permanently, even though you should. <laughs> You know, <laughs> we say permanently, but for one day, let us remember this season and what it really represents. You could easily see some flyer saying, you know, um, resurrection bubble dung or something like that. Yes. True. Yes. Right? Three three beer for 500. But that's where we're going. That's where we're going. No, that's not where we're going. That's where we are. So we have, we have, reached, we have reached there. <laughs> We have sadly we have reached there, and so it is. It is an on this. We and we, it's a culture that we have to decide what kind of culture we want in our country. And there are different holidays for different reasons. When there is mash, you have your revelry and so. But when there's a, a religious holiday, whichever religion, 
it would be, then you know you understand the, the, the type of occasion it is, and so you you abide by that particular holiday and what it's supposed to represent. But yeah. for every, people now it's it's a time to sport, and so religious or non-religious, everybody's just having a nice time, and so you'll end up yeah. with things like what you were talking about: two persons being stabbed when it was not supposed to be that kind of affair. Mashes for that. When I go to Masha, I'm not gonna ask. Oh, why? Why, why, why he dressed like that? Why, you know? I don't expect incense to be burning on Masha and people pray. My burn a different kind of incense, you know, the sacrament. <laughs> but we can be a little more, we can be a little more, um, a little more chari charitable. So we wish these brothers well, Leon Thomas and Delroy Thomas, who were stabbed and uh, I was sent to the same Mash night, you know, Easter Sunday, Easter Monday evening. That being said. That being said, Ali's making the rounds. I visited, I think it's, it's Blairman uh, Sugar Estate quite recently and telling the sugar workers, don't be afraid to speak of management and what's happening. Yes. <laughs> he and at the party really want to act there. You know, don't be afraid to speak of the glowing things <laughs> that we're doing. When you really talk about them, oh, you're a detractor. Oh, you're like progress. That's what they say. But you can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. Don't be afraid. They say tabby. Right. Nothing to fear, only, only fear itself. Right? I, we I, know. Yeah, we know and they know too. You see, they have realized that things aren't going good for them in the sugar industry, in the sugar belt. And so they're trying to make it seem as if they're open to suggestions and open to people speaking their minds. When in reality, as soon as you do, somebody shouts at you and tell you to go back and sit in a corner and you really yeah, don't and, understand and, what is happening and so persons are very much aware that one things are not going too well and two that as we were saying since the, the yesterday and the day before that what is happening in the management of guys super you know that the fact that they have to sense some mirrors tells you that things aren't going too well in the management and so i and it, when it comes we will, i guess you'll come to gpl just now too but the reality is that things aren't going well. They're recognizing it. And now they're trying to pretend as if they care what people actually think before they make a decision on how to move forward. Yeah, again, this is a blame on Sugar Estate. This comment was made. And he promised them, um, wait, wait for it, Ewart Benjamin and Kyle and Sheila Boychad. He promised uh, better wage packages for sugar workers, but he's not public servants, sugar workers, but he says, this will be achieved with larger production, you know? Better packages will be achieved with better production. Again, he was meeting with um, members there of the Blairmont estate uh, while telling them that the government is investing in mechanizing the industry. He says, speak freely. The industry will improve with increased investments in Gaisuko and we welcome all the, the best advice well, the people telling him a fire says, long now, he didn't listen in. You know, when the Venezuelan and the Spanish girls went in the boardroom. You remember that? People say, says must go, turn the boat must go. He wasn't listening. Now, now they say they're aiming. Um, look, 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 look at the dreams they're selling. 50,000, sorry, 5,000 hectares of cane, you know, for the second crop. Uh, with a goal of 20,000 hectares uh, for next year crop. They hit the harvest setting these things, and by the time we see them in uh July, August asking for more money, they're revising down all of these numbers, you know, selling dreams out here. But let's see how it goes. We wish them the best, wish them the best. He won't take nothing from them, <laughs> <laughs> wish them the best. And as we're on that front, Abido, as we're on that front, talking about what's going wrong, and there's a lot of things they're talking now about. Uh, um, operational challenges at GPL. Operational cha challenges at GPL. Now they realize they got a lot of technical um, staff deficiencies there. A lot of technical staff deficiencies there. And I wish I had the, I wish I had the graphic to show you. You don't? Shucks. You need to have that graphic, Mr. Duncan. Yes, I wish I had it ready. It, 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 um, it, uh, sorry, sorry. We apologize, folks. We don't. I wish they had it ready. But we've been highlighting how we've gotten to this point because it is these same people who come and say, speak up, speak up, speak up. We want to listen to you. 
who've been dismissing the people with the technical know-how to exactly. make the energy sector function and function properly and would have staved off some of these operational challenges that Ali's talking about. Right? Remember, yeah, yeah. Gordon was replaced there at, at GPL, a very good CEO. They bring back a whole new style, Bardindial. And now they bring friends, family, and favorites, for instance, Cash Nandilal, Al Nandilal brother, Tabby. It's yes, and I was just saying to you that you know, it's the same thing we were saying yesterday. They create a problem and then come and pretend as if they just figured out the reason for the problem. We have some technical issues, but they let go of all the technical people that were there that uh, ensure that we were on the right path come, um, by 2020. And so now to come say that we have technical deficiencies, you should come and say that we fired or did not renew the contract of all the technical people, or we forced people to resign by not listening to what they had to say. And so now we're in this particular space. Don't Correct. come to pretend as if you now do some work and some study and recognize you have technical deficiencies that were there since 2010 or something like that. I think it's right. farcical for him to come with that particular um, that particular stance. I have actually what you ha had last, and I took a screenshot of it, so I, I don't know if you found it, but they Thank had you. placed, as you said, Albert Gordon with Baradindia. They replaced uh, Dr. Aaron Fraser with Basil with Bedesi. They replaced uh, Kempton France with N Narvin Duna Ryan and other people, technical people with the skill set and the capacity that was required to take the, 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 um, the, the GPL where it needed to go between GPL and the other agencies that helped GPL to manage our energy sector. They decided they don't need them anymore. They either um, stopped their contract didn't renew their contract or cause people to resign because they were not, you know, being seen as part of the team. How dare mm -hmm. you come and now say that there are technical deficiencies? You cause the technical deficiencies that we currently have. And you put right. people in there who have no clue what they're doing and causing further mismanagement and, and causing the generators that we have to be in further disarray and not being um, looked at the way that they should. And we're now in this place, we're at 4.30 in the morning I have to be up because there's a blackout. Mm -hmm. And I know persons are facing four, sometimes five times a day. The lights are going on and off in other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. And it's going to continue because they do not know what they're doing. They cause the issue. They cause the problem and then pretend as if they know the solution. I would like to see who it is they're going to bring in now as the technical persons and how it is, what process they're going to use to determine who are the best persons for these positions. Mark says, money happy, mech, Tabitha. That's what Mark says. Money happy, money happy, mech. That's what he says. And, and look, and look, we, we have the, 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 um, the, the information up for our kind viewers. A good, a good man like Aaron Fraser replaced. He talks about operational challenges, right? But these were self-inflicted because they said so they, they know power more. They want to make GPL great again. That's what I said, like Kaisuko, right? Neo uh, Narvin, Diona Ryan replaced a decent, a good systems control operations manager. As you said, Navindradak Leela replaced somebody. This is what friends, family, favorites and flatterers this is what it looks like and we can connect some more dots as we go down and we go down i wonder if like tap to some y'all make a screenshot so that when you 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 are wrong the um what do you call it you're wrong the the water cooler at the office you can say look what you talking about some trench crap what's do here valid credible information i saw naomi say watching them I got the facts in. Naomi know the story. Naomi know the whole story. Right? So this is what it looks like. Rassimans of fuel shortage. There's that too. Is there both turnover? The, the Gulf of, um, what the place name? Tobago. Cove, Cove Bay. Cove Bay. Off Tobago's coast there. This is what it looks like. 
and we could go sector by sector, yep. entity by entity, and you'll see this kind of replication. The community that shout. That's where the work of so Ministry of Social Services in, in doing. That the pensioners gotta wait three and four months to get what is rightfully theirs. Because of course, again, friends, family, favorites, and flatterers. And that's why the people signed the letter and said, Vindya must go. Todd must go. Because they're not doing well for the people of this country. Sad to see. Tabby, that's what we have happening. It's, 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 at the end of the day, the guy and these people suffer. That is the bottom line. That they make decisions not in the best interest of the people, but in the best interest of themselves and their, their close allies. And so what at the end is the result is that you spend a lot of our money, not only on their salaries, but on purchasing things that we shouldn't be purchasing, on, on, you know, on, on, on doing things that we should not be doing. And we end up suffering because, for example, GPL, I could just, if you go through each community and ask persons how many persons have lost appliances, whose appliances either have malfunction or stopped working because of this fluctuation of current, you will hear how many persons have lost something and have to replace it because of GPL. So it's one thing when you get the blackout, but then they're, they're, they're ensuring that our appliances in our homes yeah. are now ineffective. And then on top of that, we have to pay salaries to the people who are also ineffective. And it's, it's a ripple effect that is not good for the country because we can't say we're developing. We can't laud about all of these hotels we bring in with full of ACs and all of these new people and Dubai and all of that. And we can't get our energy sector in order because you put people there who have no clue what they're doing and are just they're just causing us more mayhem in the, in the system. And, and, and we're now reaping the... The, the inefficiency of, of the fact that they are not, they have no capacity to do what it is that they're, they're paid to do. Correct is right. Correct is right. And so um, this is the reality of it. Sad to say. This is the reality. Uh, they're saying that the, uh, the here, they're blaming aging infrastructure. Generators exceeding 30 years, but they buy 17 second-hand generator, of which one and a half working. They, they're talking about that. But going back to generators that are, I don't know if it's the ones that are buy. Let me just be honest. That are so aged. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> just let me be clear. And, and listen to this. Now, I always got to stick in, stick in these little um, side notes. Um, uh, uh, the industry was neglected from 2015 to 2020. Yes, you have, you have to stick that part. Uh, now, if this industry was state of the art up to 2050. You can run it down in three years. If this industry is up to par, operating Sharon, plus Sharon, standards. Sharon, Sharon, I want to stop you. Stop because we were, we were in a good place in 2020. Look what they've done in three years. <laughs> few and fewer blackouts we had. Few and fewer blackouts. Right? But here it is. They said the government, the Ali government, they're working on a holistic reform of power supply to bridge the demand supply gap, including the seeking financing from all these fancy places, the UK export finance. They want to complete new transmission lines and upgrade existing infrastructure. This is what we did year after year after year after year, Tabby. And that's why we had decreased uh, power outages. We invested in the technical people we didn't know how. That is how we were able to solve some of these problems. But again, when you have friends, family, and favorites, you're not going to have that um, uh, uh, decrease. Shara, this, this black hole thing didn't start now. When they prepared a 2024 budget, they didn't know they needed to ensure that they have monies in, in, in there for GPL. They didn't now they're going to come back to Parliament with more monies for GPL, you know. They didn't plan for that. Tabby, they didn't know. Now they're looking for more resources for GPL. They, they, this $1.1 trillion budget and they don't have money in the body to ensure that GPL is up to par for where it needs to be. And these people just like to think we're fools. Because I don't know where the money is going. Correct is right. That being said, Tabby, that being said, it brings us to this other issue. Delayed projects. Now, folks watching us like Kyle. Kyle says he done screenshot Tabby and sent to Guinea Spectator. Pim, pim. <laughs> 
<laughs> Emma Kyle voice. Pim, pim. You done screenshot. I want you to understand what's happening here. And ask yourself, if anything going right in this country, fires on every front, none of the estates currently, sugar estates, are up to par. None are fulfilling the quotas that they promised last year that we're going to fulfill. None of them. Right? Look what's happening with these contracts now. 99.9% .9 of the contracts being executed currently behind schedule. We're functioning in this country. I just I was going to ask you that question. We're functioning. Not going kitty cat up. What functioning like a normal country? Right? I will use democratic. Because you got some normal. dictatorships and so on. That the train running on time. What functioning right in this country? Right? And listen to what they're saying, Tabitha and others. <laughs> That Minister of Finance, Ashley Singh, the one who the run away to Dubai, remember that, when the things they think. When the tide turned politically, he ran away. And then Landon Lal and uh, uh, one Edgil, they are to issue shortly letters to contractors who have exceeded their project deadlines and justified extension. I thought you had things in built in the system that looked after this. If there's some contractual infraction, right? They 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 they're willing to penalize, right? How come these same things and bill into other contracts? How come they crying sanctity of contracts? We can't touch them, boys. Huh? <laughs> oh, monkey, there's no wish them for jump on. Tabitha, and, and, that's like that. and we were saying that since he asked them, like, why Angel had to be there, and it's the same thing. Why is it that the president of a country has to tell his ministers, okay, now send all the letters? If a system is in place, there's a contract, they, everybody has to abide by the, 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 the clauses of the contract. And so if it is that the clauses after, if you, um, you have not been able to finish the contract on time, that you have so much time in excess of the, uh, the the first timeline and you've gone past that then system should be in place as to what happens next why they have to wait that means that there have been conversations behind the scene that is outside of the system that is why mm -hmm. ali has to come now and say that so that they're okay. not following their own guidelines they're not following the contract that they signed with these contractors and so the contractors feel as if they don't really have to abide by those contracts because they're not following them they know they can go to Ali or go to somebody else and say, hey, you know, give me a little five more months, give me 10 more months or something. And that is how they've been managing the, 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 the sector. And so now you see Ali has to come out and say, okay, now it's time to send the letters. But if you read that actual article, and then Andra is saying something different. The right hand or the left hand doing? <laughs> the right hand or no the left hand doing? As a matter of fact, they're saying here that Liquidated damages will be instituted immediately for projects beyond the contractual time and government is enforcing contractual clauses in cases of breaches or unexplained delays. They've stated that government will not countenance negligence from contractors. Well, like I said, no, but 80%, and that's a conservative estimate some of these contractors here. You know, government will not countenance negligence from contractors and delays. So how are we treating with boredness? How we how we treat you with Bamia primary school contractors statement? Huh? How we can treat with them? And the list goes on and on and on. And that's how we will find out whether or not it's just not a fluff or they're actually serious about this matter. I think on the one hand, if they're coming up to an elections year and they're recognizing that they're not on target with all of these things that they want to put in their manifesto as they having accomplished over their five years, and so. They're upset that they can't, some of these projects are not finished. But at the same time, it's their fault that the products aren't finished because they have been giving products to persons who don't have the capacity to complete products on time. And they're giving way too many projects than the people have the capacity to finish. So that's two. Three, the reality is that because they're their own people, I can't see them going beyond just talking and sending letters. 
because these are the same people that they're going to need for different reasons come elections time. We won't get into what those reasons are at this point. But and so on the various levels, I know it's just no. They're going to talk a big talk and hope that the contractors do what they're required to do. Uh, 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 so that by the elections time, they can put some nice pictures out and they've accomplished something. But reality is up. that we're going to be in a bad place because they're setting the system to fail for themselves and to yeah. fail themselves. Yeah. And Tabby, you know, when we think about some of this, you get the impression June and Kyle and Rahim, uh, Ganesh, you get the impression as though a lot of thinking what didn't go into this. We clearly didn't have the capacity to manage projects on this scale and there was no capacity building before they come in and they say you get a contract you get one you get one you friends family and favorites right they're not prepared for the volume of work but now they're coming down to crunch time i see we have mp ganish my paul on the line they're coming down to crunch time and it's giddy up giddy up giddy up that's how they're going Right? Ghani says if the public, um, the, the PPC was active in the first place, we would not have been at the current state. Right? This is Public Procurement Commission. We would not have been in this state. And we've said it again and we say it again and again. 90% of the constitutional agencies have only come into, um, what do you call it, operation. You know, have been operationalized in the last 100 days. But now you're coming down to election, Tabby. And it's giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. So thank you, Ganesh, MP Ganesh Mahi Paul, who is now um, a Constitution Reform Commissioner, Mahi Paul, for reminding us of that. Congratulations, Ganesh. Commissioner, sorry, Mahi Paul. Commissioner. <laughs> Congratulations, Commissioner. Yes, Commissioner Ganesh, yes. But he's, he's right, the, the, the the workings that, and that's why we talk about the systems that should be in place that should work, and included in those is the Public Procurement Commission. If it is that that was functioning effectively, we would not be in some of these um, at the, the position that we're in now, where contracts are concerned. But nothing is working because everybody is relying on the president. I'm not saying the commission is relying on the president, but everybody is either listening. The contractors are taking their guidance not from the law. Not mm -hmm. from the Public Procurement Commission, not from their contract that they would have signed, but from whoever it is that they had a conversation with, whether it's a minister or a friend of a minister or the president who would have allowed them to get the contract. And so their conversation is back and forth between that person instead of the systems that are put in place to ensure that things are done in order and accurately and, uh, and correctly so that we get the best value for our money. And because that has not been happening, we're in this position that we're in. And so the PP only have themselves to blame for the reason why their own projects have not finished on time so that they can go to elections saying, hey, we have been able to do 200 or 500 or whatever roads they want to stay, whatever they would have um, completed within the, the timeline. So they can't blame anybody else but themselves and we'll see how they move on from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't like systems. I, 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 will, I will give you that. They don't like systems. The Integrity Commission was operationalized the 31st of May, 2022. Police Service Commission, same day, 31st of May, 2022. The Judicial Service Commission that's making um, some appointments and just recently appointed three, um, three young persons, uh, they tell us, as new commissioners of title, the Judicial Service Commission only operationalized July 14, 2023. That was last year. Less than a year ago, the Judicial Service Commission, the Public Procurement Commission that Ganesh mentioned, was only operationalized, appointed uh, July 1st, 2022. The Teaching Service Commission, December of 2022. Uh, the Petroleum Commission, we're still waiting on that. And of course, the Constitution Reform Commission, the Constitution Reform Commission, only operationalized yesterday. And mind you, even though some of these bodies might have been appointed, you know, given their mandate, whether they're meeting is another story, right? Now, they love to talk about the protracted elections we've had. You would think that would have given them some time to hit the ground running. By the time you come in, first month, first hundred days, you know exactly what you want to do. These people are appointed, you know, in place. This is the machinery of government but not ready for prime time. 
they are not ready. We're still waiting on the appointment, for instance, of the substantive chief justice and chancellor of the judiciary. We're still holding. The 70 Judicial Service Commission is in place. It's in place now, Mr. President. It's another story. This is a country or what Martin Carter said, a civilized plantation. Is it? Sure. Yes, sir. the one thing I, I, I would humbly disagree with you, it's not that they're not ready for prime time. When you have your own agenda, and your own agenda is does not coincide with proper governance and following the rule of law, this is what we get. They have an agenda, and they're following their agenda to a T. And so their agenda does not coincide with what it is we would expect of a, uh, a political party that is coming into government that understands the rule of law, understands following the rule of law, understands what proper governance means and want to follow those proper governance structures. And so we end up with what we have, which is a, 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 a group of people who are interested in themselves, interested in amassing wealth for themselves and their friends and family, interested in ensuring that they're above the rule of law. And so all of the systems and structures that should be in place to ensure that we are following our constitution, that we are following the laws that, are, that should govern us, they're not interested in that. So they don't have time to sit and put these um, institutions and these commissions and so um, in check at the beginning. That's not what their, their concern is. Their concern is ensuring that the space is there so they can do what they want to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it, without very, with very little uh, pushback from the systems that should be, should be, so should be on board. Correct is right. Correct is right. Um, and we're going to continue to see this kind of knee-jerk reaction where, uh, you know, they, they swoop down and they say, oh, this is Ali providing leadership here. You pull all the managers in GPL when they create a problem. They swoop down at these sugar states and they said, oh, this is what should be doing. And bah, 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 bah. And you create all the problems. Right? When Zulfikar took over the sugar industry, for instance, they said they would do a study to see what is needed and so on. But you know, they didn't like study and so on. They didn't, they didn't like book and pencil and so on. <laughs> they, didn't like, they didn't like book and pencil and so on. Folks, we're going to have to leave it here for today. <laughs> We've gone a little bit over because we started a little bit behind. But it is what it is. We out front, we here. I want to say good morning to Rahim Amarali. Yeah, I uh, uh, him feel well. Welcome, man. Y'all give him some hugs and so on. I know how he sleep last night. I know how he wake up. I know how he was suckled as a child, you know, or the absence thereof. I know a lot about Rahim Amaral. So I won't judge you too harshly. He or she, because sometimes a lot of fake name and so on, you know? Sure. Um, I just want Rahim to be in a in. basement somewhere, you know, wondering where the next meal coming from. I don't want to be too hard at Rahim. Yes. Right. I just saw I just saw a message from the Honorable Winston Jordan. He said, "The current moribund uh, PPC is useless. What we need is a statutory body like the Contractors General Office in Jamaica, with full powers and free from the executive's influence." Thank you, uh, right. Minister Jordan, for that comment. Right. I have to and that people. is why this unit that is going to be looking at these delayed contracts and so on, the talking in by Anil should not be there. They talk it. They want to do you. something like Jamaica, but they don't want the freedom. They don't want the, uh, as as you said, the the independence. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I just got one thing. How come you get the message and I get it? <laughs> <laughs> it was in the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> Ghana says that there's blackout in the East Bank right now, in Little Dubai, where all this transformation is taking place. There is blackout. Me and Melo, we see you there. Mark and all the other folks. We see you, Tommy and Tracy Clark. And I still wonder how you see the message. And I didn't see John Bourne, we see Marilyn Thomas and all the other folks. This is what it is. This is what it is. And again, when you connect the dots for yourself, because you know, we beg and we got sense. You, you, you gotta ask yourself, we're working in this country. What is what is working in this country? You know, you see a lot of movement, but I learned early. Chabi, that movement is not the same as progress. You got a lot of movements, you know, but you got a lot of progress. People could be hearing you, but they're listening. You know, Rahim can catch you late, right? 
In about two or three years time, Rahim gonna march from the basement. He say, oh, that's what it mean. That's what it mean. You see? Yeah. I so just why, why? Message. I'm getting messages. I'm sorry. I just got a message that the board of directors of the Atlanta Surveys is still not operational. Oh my. Atlanta so Surveys. You more often, you got a lot of messages with you. <laughs> <laughs> violent, violent, incredible messages. He said, that is what it is. When you add it up, what you get here? We had minus, <laughs> minus something here. Not plenty of things working. So while, um, while, Irfan saying to the sugar workers, y'all talk your mind, but the management, not easy to talk your mind, but the government. He said, speak with your nobody management, right? They can hear, but they're listening. Vera was on the board and then Vera, every week almost, as Vera has a required reading piece in the press about Gaisuko and the fact that is going no place. You know, so when you hear Irfan out here talking, it's sound and fury. But symbolizing nothing from that great poem. Thank you, uh, Minister Jordan. And some, I don't vex some people that just said Minister Jordan. I don't vex Rahim. Thank you, the folks who sent Abby the other message from the, about the board and so on. Yeah, I got that from Trevor Ben. <laughs> and all the other folks. Thank yes. you guys for being here with us this morning. Tabby? No, I, I, I didn't. <laughs> Let me try to end on a positive note, but on, on based on everything we've said this morning, reality is clear. Nothing is functioning because they don't want it to function effectively because they have to thrive in a society where yeah. nothing functions effectively because once it is, then they can't do what they need to do to get what they need to get. With need, and that so that requires an ineffective society, ineffective governance structure. And so all of these commissions that aren't working, all of these entities now they're trying to put one under the minister himself instead of it being uh, outside of the executive. It's a, on the, We have to understand that the way in which they govern is not in the best interest of the people. So let's get that clear. And so we have to make a decision as a people whether that kind of governance is what is required at this particular point of our history. I do not believe so. So even as we understand that, I just still think that we still need to project positively we know what we need to do when the time comes, which is just say there's the end of the PPP. But we also, as we go on on our daily lives, to stay, look after each other, protect each other, uh, uh, be careful on the roadways, uh, look out for each other. I can't say that enough because we need to do more of that, more of um, less about ourselves and more about what is happening with our neighbor, looking out for children and the young people on the roadways. Um, and even wherever you see them, if it is that they're doing something or they may be involved in or you recognize something is going wrong with your concern, step in if you can. Um, or if you need the authorities to step in, let them do that. Uh, and just let us be our brothers and sisters keeper in this end because that is the most we can do because we can't depend on the state to do what is required of them in this particular point. Excellent. True and true and correct on every note. Beryl Crawford, thanks for being here with us. And Mia Miller. Thank you as well, and Tracy Clark, uh, our, our minister, uh, Winston Jordan, and Trevor Ben, and John Board, and all the other folks. Keep sending the information, folks, and we continue to disseminate here. Credible and valid, valid and credible all the time. Tabby, have a fantastic day at your end. And all the other folks who have joined us this morning, thank you so much for being here. Y'all make a difference. Tabby, you got the final word, it's final sign up. <laughs> have a good day stay good to yourselves remember um just just be good and be good citizens no littering i have to put that one in um my, my children see the littering and they're like mommy why are people throwing things on the ground I don't know. Lighting, and and so that's the no littering people please and just stay good have a good day excellent that's it for